The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong. But he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it. To take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. And he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage. Renato finally realized that Lapino was a traitor to the cause. And maybe Renato could use that somehow. Renato couldn't quite put his paw on when he'd realized Lapino was working for the Empire. He'd never exactly seen Lapino sending coded messages to the palace, but he was sure. The rabbit had been on too many disastrous missions where he was the only survivor or where he accidentally missed getting on the boat that went down to the abyss in flames. If Renato could prevent Lapino from getting back to the fleet with all the intelligence he'd probably gathered, it might be worth the trip. How had they come to this? They'd been on so many adventures together. Lapino had talked Renato out of prison at least four times, and Renato had rescued Lapino from at least two lynch mobs. You are interrupted story time! Oh, the lead lady. Now I'll never find out how it ended! Rabbit resented him. Lapino was hilarious because he was so down on himself and everyone else. But behind the laughs, he wasn't a happy camper. Ooh, was this payback? Or did the Empire have his little white tail in a vice? It would be fun to try out that one. And here was a handy workbench. wasn't watching. Actually, several buckets.
ravens were landing everywhere from dropships. You'd better get moving. If they got to Lupino first, the rabbit would give the Empire all the intelligence he'd been stealing from the Rebellion, and they'd probably give him a medal. Mm, he'd have to be very careful about how he played Lupino. At the slightest hint of danger, the mad rabbit would take off like a... well, a, a rabbit. Pino would betray him. The core was dangerous. Now, Renata had a fleeting idea that the two ideas went together somehow. And then it was gone again. Oh, damn ideas. They never stuck around when you needed them. Bloody and exhausted, Renato finally reached Lapino. The rabbit was practicing shuffling his favorite deck. Now that he knew what the rabbit was, there are a few things about him that Renato didn't find so amusing anymore. You sent me an urgent message saying that you're in danger. Oh, I am. The ravens are coming. Now, I've got a clever plan to kidnap Zenobia. Renato wanted to clap shackles on the rabbit and shout, you're a traitor and I'm not falling for it. But if there was one thing Renato was sure of, it was that the core of the Sky River was dangerous mostly to its user. If he could put it in the Emperor's hands, old Lysengrim III might blow himself and his fleet up with it. Yes, that was it. Renato felt like a real hero, brave and smart. He told the rabbit all about the Sky River's God's Eye core. I'll go get the core while you attack Zenobia, he told the rabbit. Oh, wait, I have an even better idea. I'll get the core and you attack Zenobia, said the rabbit. Right, yeah, that is better, agreed Renato. Perfect. The traitor would make sure the Emperor got the core. Now Renato just needed the Emperor to use the core. If he could only get something that the Emperor wanted very badly. Zenobia. He could save her and bait the Emperor at the same time. Right, now, all Renato had to do was fight his way through Zenobia's invading troops, sneak onto her ship and into her bedroom, and kidnap her without any of her dozens of guards alerting her. Then, he would rely on her love for him to convince her how evil her father was, so she'd run away with him instead of going back to her father, who was going to blow himself up. Hmm, it did sound a little risky. But Renato had a feeling it would work out somehow. It always did. Like having the world's deadliest foe right by his side. This chest had teaspoons stolen from every inn in Boreas. Oh, and something more useful.
Hey, how do you tell if someone's far away or just really small? Renato was halfway to Zenobia's encampment when Lapino showed up. He was disheveled and distraught. They jumped us. I barely got away. Oh, they got the core. Oh, it was all going according to plan, thought Renato. Now he just needed Zenobia on his side. Mm, yes, that was even better. The Iblis Stone. Zenobia could get it. And then the Emperor would have to pursue them. Wait. No. The gem would corrupt anyone. Even her. That's it, he thought. Even Lapino. Even though Lapino was already a traitor. It would turn him against his secret master, the Emperor. He would try to make himself Emperor. And the Emperor would have to defend himself with the core. Boom. He was a super genius. This is terrible, Bernardo told the rabbit. If only I had gone for the Iblis Stone, but now it's lost in enemy territory. He handed Lupino a map. It gives the bearer so much power. We can only hope the Emperor never finds it. What was that? Said Lupino. I, I, I think someone's following us. I didn't hear anything. Rabbit ears. You go on ahead. I'll check it out. And with that, Lapino hopped off with the map. Ah, impatient. Renato slinked through Zenobia's ship, making no sound at all. She was curled up on her bed. Mm, he'd forgotten how beautiful she was, how sleek, how soft. He tapped her on the shoulder with his sword. She was made of smoke, and he noticed he had a very solid blade to his throat. Did you really think you could capture me? Purred a familiar voice. I just wanted to chat. Said Renato, did you ever wonder why the Emperor adopted you? He needs a sacrifice, someone who truly loves him, to make a bargain with the lost gods. That's a vicious lie. He wants to bring them back. That, that, that's crazy. Why would anyone? They could make him immortal, an eater of souls. And with that, her eyes widened. She understood. Renato told her how he had rescued a priest whose order had been massacred, how he had slept in a burnt village. At midnight, the Emperor's victims had come to him in his dreams to tell him of the hideous eldritch rituals they'd been sacrificed in. He could still see those kittens and puppies, their wide, sad eyes, their moist noses. You can't prove that. I've got a witness at the observatory. couldn't tell her, not yet, why he was really here. He didn't want her to be anywhere near the fleet when her father blew himself and Lupino up. So he told her about how the Emperor's obscene rituals had raised ancient artifacts out of the land. How he'd followed the appalling trail of the hideous horrors His Majesty had perpetrated for the sake of his own immortality. Any of this ring a bell? He said. He told me it was all lies. You've always known when I was lying. I always hated that about you, said Renato. The rebellion had started after atrocities that the Empire hushed up. Renato had rescued a priest whose order had been massacred for one book. He had slept in a burnt village. Dead kittens and puppies had come to tell him what the Emperor had done to them.
Leonardo wondered if it wasn't cheaper to build bridges and stairs. I'd know if my father started practicing black magic. Why? Would you join in? Uh, no. I'd destroy his books and, and I'd... <laughs> oh, God. Okay, you're not completely wrong. They've resurrected one of his victims. Well, look, I mean, look, it's not exactly alive, but it can talk. A true witness, she said. ball, he thought. the sandcastles when he was too the observatory was a burning hulk dead scientists and black feathers everywhere the ravens had taken special care to burn the reanimated witness to cinders Zenobia stared at the carnage he didn't want me to hear the witness did he I guess not what's your plan she asked so Renato explained his brilliant gambit sending Lapino to get the Iblis Stone, become super powerful and corrupted, provoke the Emperor into using the core against him, thus blowing up both of them, and hopefully the fleet too. Let me visit your council, she said, shaken. I want to help. Could he really trust her? He'd done it. He'd made Zenobia see how evil her father really was. He wished she didn't feel this urge to join in the rebellion. After all, he'd taken care of the Emperor, right? Yeah, but she'd always been conscientious like that. She told him she had to go somewhere first. So Renato gave her the location of the secret base and they agreed to meet in the ruins. He had a very good feeling about this. What had Zenobia gone off to do? 
What was more important than meeting the rebel council? Had he made a mistake, sending her to the ruins? No. He knew they could trust each other. He could trust her because she never broke her word. And she could trust him because she could see right through him. Well, she'd probably be there well before him. She at least didn't have to fight her way through rainstorms of ravens. Renato Smash! down, he told himself. Don't look down. seen in a play once. Ah, the road less traveled, thought Renardo. How intriguing. As he came around the bend, there was Lupino, unconscious on the side of the path. And Renato could smell a familiar, sweet, smoky scent. Who? Zenobia. It had to be. She never used a combat spell when she could use drowsy gas. That meant... She had the Iblis Stone. What would it do to her? She hated her father now. She'd kill him for sure. The Council wouldn't mind if she killed the Emperor, but... Murdering her father would destroy her. He had to get to whatever ledge she was on and talk her down from it. Didn't your mother tell you it's rude to stare? Snapped Renato, a little smug. Long stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. He was on fire. So he passed it.
sense the jewel's power. He had a feeling they were gonna be great friends. Everyone in the council chamber was dead. Zenobia stood shivering in the courtyard, drenched in blood. Why? He managed. They... they started arguing with me. I lost my temper and I, I wanted their blood. Well, not me. The stone did. Why did you take it from Lupino? I had a plan. You had a, a stupid plan, she said. I'm going to go kill my father now. No, you can't. You'll... you'll just take his place. You'll become worse than him. Get out of my way, or I'll kill you too. You won't kill me, he said. And I won't let you kill the Emperor. Enraged, she raised the sword. You hate him too? He could sense the Iblis Stone, yearning for his death. But she didn't strike. If you kill him, he'll destroy you. I know you. Shut up! She shouted, her sword trembling. I won't lose you again. Not for anything. Get away from me! He said, and he was very close. I can't lose you again. And he was in reach of her sword now. I hate him! I hate you too! I love you, he said for the very first time. And then she was weeping. He was holding her. The sword had dropped from her hand. He glanced at the Iblis Stone. It was no longer the Black of the Void. It looked like coal. No. It glowed like a cinder. It was crackling, burning, crumbling into ashes. You've always loved me, haven't you? She said. She was weak. The stone had taken so much from her. Always, he said. She staggered as he helped her up. Let me take you away. Where? The island of Avalon. The sisters will heal you. He will follow us. Then we need the Farfarer, the fastest ship in the Empire. The Empire had seized his ship. They'd have to take it back. Don't get ahead of yourself, lad. so well. He wasn't fighting for money or loot or a cause. He was fighting for her, for them. His sword danced, his feet flew, and the ravens recoiled from his ferocity.
there it was. His beautiful skycraft, the Farfarer. They would fare very far indeed. Beyond the Empire, beyond the reach of the Empire, to the mystical island of Avalon. He didn't know exactly where it was, but he knew he could find it. And they would find peace there. Second star on the right, and straight on till morning, laughed Zenobia. And they laughed together for the first time in a long time. Dead tired. Then he was just dead.
but they did not go unnoticed. Scout ships lifted off, and the long lance of the Imperial flagship. Renato turned downwind to gain speed. The Raven ships could pursue, but they couldn't close. The far speaker croaked, you return her and live. Go sacrifice yourself, yelled Renato. Then you won't have her either. On the flagship, the Emperor was readying some arcane weapon. It couldn't be. It was the core. A devastating beam lanced out of the flagship. Renato zigzagged wildly to keep the Farfair out of it. Now the Raven scout ships were closing the distance. And the beam was getting closer too. Then came a blinding flash. And the air was searingly hot all around him. There was a thunderous, deafening roar. He could smell burnt oak and burnt feathers and burnt flesh. But when he could hear and see again, they were alive and unhurt. And they were alone in the sky. Zenobia embraced him. They had done it. Through luck and through love, they had won the war. Avalon, here we come, he said as he held her arms wide in the prow of the boat and let her feel its speed. Maybe the real Avalon is wherever we're together, she said. And so, after a bit of an argument, Renardo and Zenobia went to one of the two Avalons. The one shrouded in mists. Or the one in their hearts. But which one they went to, I'll never tell. He'd done it. He'd forged his own destiny. Well, he hadn't actually done done it. But he knew what he would do. Renato smiled at the book. He practically wanted to kiss it. The kid's sacrifice hadn't been in vain. He'd saved the book and saved the world. Renato owed him and his mother so much. Renato lowered the mainsail and let the farfarer shoot forward in the breeze. Second star to the right, and straight on till morning. This time, he would win.